This conference will now be recorded. Start the meeting. This is the Board of Supervisors meeting of the County Courthouse. It's an insurance informational meeting. Uh, it's 1 30 on Thursday, the uh, 12th of January. We have a motion in front of us. Uh, I'll accept the motion to approve the agenda. I'll move to approve the agenda. Mayor has made the motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. 100% seconds. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. All right. Aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Discussion and possible action on health insurance. Ryan, I'm sorry, the last name I'm not. Bourbon. Ryan Bourbon is with us from insurance. Nappy Group Benefit Partners and now Yeah, there's a new logo on the proposal. Our, my agency was acquired last year, so December 31st, my agency got bought by a company called Assured Partners. Um, we're an international brokerage firm. Primarily, most of our business is in the U.S. Uh, we have about 9,500 employees, um, 800,000 plus clients. So my agency had about 35 employees prior to the acquisition. We're now much bigger with more resources. But it, the same team that works with um, Lindsay and Rachel here at the county remains the same. So I still have my core staff of five people that work on my team supporting roughly 80 clients. Um, between 50 employees and up to about 6,000. That's kind of my client range. So um, I'm glad you pointed that out. Uh, but today's meeting, we're going to review the ISAC fiscal year 24 renewal. Um, my agency prior and still currently today is the exclusive agent for ISAC, so no other agency can represent this product. Um, however, they allow me to act completely independent. So outside of ISAC, we have 28 counties that are inside of ISAC. We also consult for, I think, a total of 60 counties with various products. Um, so we do have a very good pulse on county business across the state. And I would say in sizes ranging from 50 employees all the way up to 300. There's very few counties that exceed that. And a lot of those counties are likely on their own um, because of their size. But for counties of your size with 85 employees, being able to pull yourselves with other like-minded employers makes a ton of sense. It's all, I think it's even really imperative in the future that um, you seriously consider to, to continue to pull your resources with, with other counties and scale up your health plan. And you'll see, I, I painted out a um, summary of the meeting that I kind of want to go through. We'll reference the book as we go through this as well. Um, but we'll start with the topic one. So the ISAC health program continues to grow. Uh, Wayne County entered the program as of July 1st. Um, Monroe County entered the program as of October 1st. I also have many more counties that want to get in. Some of those counties are unhealthy and have ongoing condition. And so we're, we're actually excluding them from coming into the pool to keep the pool more solvent and profitable. Um, but we do have the ability to decline and we do that on a fairly regular basis. Um, but as a whole, we're letting good, healthy groups in. Um, the pool is growing. We now have 2,400 employees, 6,000 members. So Mitchell County, you're not 85 employees. You're really looked at as a group of 2,400. And that's incredibly important as we look to the future and what healthcare is doing. Um, catastrophic claimants, claims over a million dollars are increasing at a pace that we have never seen. Specialty medications, Hemophilia drug just got FDA approved at three and a half million dollars per treatment. Um, so if you're a group on your own of 85 employees and something like this happens to you, it can be catastrophic for your price. We have a couple counties in Northwest Iowa that went into ISAC. They've had some of these conditions take place. They have seen their premiums increase 150% over three years. So that can happen and it is happening. If you're inside of ISAC or another multi-employer health plan, there are some parameters in place that, that in essence, we can't kick you out. That's a rule that ISAC has. Um, and there are some safeguards in place, so your renewal can only be so, so big. And so we'll look at some of those things. Now, Mitchell County, you've had a great year. You're coming off your, your most profitable year in ISAC. Um, but when we look back over the last 22 years that you've been in the pool, you have not been profitable. So there are years where your group is unhealthy. Um, that again, if you think about being outside of the pool, could make it much more challenging. And remember, it's not a guarantee to get back in. So as we continue down the topic one for significant growth, uh, the dental and vision programs have grown tremendously. We self-fund our dental plan. So 
Delta Dental is the administrator, but there's no profit margin. Any other insurance carrier, you try to make money. ISAC's simply trying to break even. We've actually set our FY24 budget for dental to actually lose money because we do have a significant reserve. Um, so we are, we're, we're going into a known loss and that's kept our overall increase down to 3%. That was justified to be higher. Um, and then just a little bit about our agency. Again, I, I kind of opened with that, uh, but we do consult for the core benefits for medical, dental, and vision over 40 Iowa counties today. We work with another 20 counties on some various products. Um, I just came from Nyack and Mason City. I work with a lot of community colleges, cities, uh, K through 12 institutions. Um, so a lot of public sector business in the state of Iowa. Our agency has more than any other agency in the state. I can confidently say that. Um, as we go to topic two, again, you've been a part of the ISAC Group Benefits Program since 1999. Your FY24 renewal, I think, is just over 3%. The overall trend increase for ISAC this year was 8%. We're coming off three back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back years of very low increases with ISAC because our reserve grew so much. We have about $28 million in reserves at the association level which helps us offset increases and create more predictability and rates for the future. So we're going to talk about what I think you need to do. And we talked about this last year with creating your own reserve for your partial self fund. We do the same thing at ISAC with at a much bigger grander scale. So we have about $28 million in reserves. That's going to help us keep rates consistent over the next 10 years. And I, I really urge you, and it's a bullet point that we'll get to, do not look at health insurance as a year-to-year -year purchase because you it, it, you will not win. The analogy of a think about your investment portfolio, you can't time the market, but it's time in the market that will probably give you a, a, a result that you're happy with. Health insurance needs to be looked at the exact same way. If you're jumping carriers, you cause a lot of disruption with employees. You also bring into the, the equation what happens if we have a catastrophic claimant. And that's ongoing at renewal. It can get very challenging. What's an example? Uh, premature babies at renewal would be a great example. Spinal atrophy, which is a rare condition treated with a $250,000 injection. A lot of specialty drugs treating arthritis, psoriasis, Crohn's disease. There are 300 drugs in the FDA pipeline, all specialty drugs, all starting at about $5,000 a month and up. And they're everywhere. Every one of our health plans have it. Uh, Humira being the leader, that's the most known specialty drug. It's been around forever. It treats a lot of conditions. It's about $6,000 a month. That's going generic this year, so that, that cost will drop. But the manufacturer's already replaced it with a, a drug that's three times as expensive called Skyrizi. So these attorneys and these drug manufacturers are incredibly smart with a ton of money for R&D um, with great legal teams. And so if the day is coming where... Pharmacy will cost more than the medical side. We are, pharmacy was typically 10% of the cost, medical was 90. It's now about 30, 70. We're not far away from having pharmacy cost more than our medical costs. And of the pharmacy spend, 1% of the utilization is driving 50% of the cost. So of 6,000 members in ISAC, 60 people are costing 50% of our overall pharmacy spend, which is $8 million as a whole. You think about that for a second, it's it's really almost it's mind blowing. And that's going to get worse. It is getting worse. I rarely watch TV, but I watched last night and I saw three new drugs that I never heard of in 45 minutes. If you watch much TV, you will see a lot of commercials for <clears throat> specialty drugs. And remember, every time you see something like that, think about sixty thousand dollars a year in cost is being straddled to an employer. Very little goes to the employee. Um, I worked with Lindsay. I know you you requested some very deep uh, and comprehensive claim reporting, which I provided her. I also know you're working with another agency in Cedar Falls, which I think is a relative of an employee here. We we I want you to have the best deal, but I want you to have your eyes wide open if you make a change like that. If you leave a multi-employer health plan and you go on your own with an insurance agency that has very little traction in Iowa, has been here a couple of years that uses a rental network. But discounts that are not as deep as Walmart, years two, three, four, and five could be, they are very unpredictable. And I think likely more expensive for you if you try to make a change. If you made a change, 
The only option I would do is I would look at Walmart on a direct basis to be standalone with Walmart, but then you still lose some of those safeguards in place that we have with ISAC. So I did get, Lindsay wanted a direct quote from Walmart, so I have that. It's more competitive because your data is really good. I have two other clients within ISAC that wanted direct quotes. Their rates were 20% more than the ISAC renewal. So we have 28 counties, three wanted direct quotes, two made absolutely no sense. You're the one group probably within the 28 where you could save money if you leave ISAC this year and go direct with Walmart, but you have absolutely no idea what will happen to you in years two, three, and four. If we become unhealthy, does it, if we're not able directly with ISAC, is there a chance that the you can't get kicked out with, I mean, with the Wellmark, excuse me, if we were directly with Wellmark and we became unhealthy. It, it's not very common that they would ever non-renew you, but they do have the right to non-renew you. Any employer over 50, you, you do not have to be renewed. And in the past, I know you talked about the rate, like one person, 1.00 means your premiums and your payout are the same. Correct. Do you know what our number is now? Yeah, we'll we'll get to that. Okay. Yeah, over the last that'll change the number, which then yeah, your price. your twenty two year history with ISAC, you ran at one hundred and five percent. So for every dollar you paid in premium, you've expensed out a dollar and five cents in cost. I don't know, like ten fifteen years over hundred hundred and thirty. Yeah, it, it has gotten better, but even two years ago you were unprofitable. We're just you're looking at the snapshot in time over the last twelve months where it was the best year in the history of ISAC that you've been with ISAC. And so there is an opportunity to save, but if you, again, look at health insurance as a minimum five year purchase, you cannot look at this year to year, or you will get burned. It's just a matter of time. Look at this over the long haul. And ISAC's been good to you over the last 22 years. You've been unprofitable. And your rates are still very competitive when you compare to your peers. So we're gonna look at that standalone ICE, uh, Wellmark proposal. And then I have some considerations since I know you're looking outside of ISAC, I, again, I want you to have your eyes wide open if you make a decision like this. You're gonna lose a lot of complimentary benefits that ISAC pays that are a part of your premium today. So you have a very comprehensive wellness program with incentives. You have an accident plan that covers any off-the-job accident within 72 hours that you seek treatment for. That's roughly, a, a, that just the accident plan alone is about a $30,000 annual benefit that your employees receive that the county is paying for through your premium, but it is not a separate line item. So they are getting a reimbursement for their wellness program every year. If they get their physical of $75 or $100, and anytime they have an accident off the job, they're shoveling snow, they hurt their back, and they go to the chiropractor, they start to get paid. That all goes away if you leave ISAC. There's also an employee assistance program that's built right in, free COBRA administration for Lindsay. She's making changes in Employee Navigator, which is our Ben Admin system. It does all of the carrier enrollments. That also goes away. It connects with a COBRA administrator that tracks the COBRA event, so it takes all of that liability off the county. We handle that process for you. Consolidated billing, so any ISAC product comes on one bill. And then the enrollment platform. Again, I already mentioned that. We handle all of the carrier enrollments. So you're not going to Wellmark, Delta Dental, Delta Vision, Reliance Standard, it's all done in one spot. And there's no separate fees for that. That's all a part of your premium today. You're also not paying for a consultant. I'm on retainer with ISAC, so there's no direct fee. I have a fee for you that I will show you. It's $34 per employee per month enrolled if you want to go stand alone with Walmart. I'd be happy to represent you, although I don't think it's in your best interest to do this. You can save $100,000 the first year, but I can't tell you with any certainty at all what's going to happen in year two or three. And that's with Walmart, which is the only carrier I'd recommend you move to. Walmart, I think, has 96 of the 99 counties as clients. Again, health insurance should be looked at as a three to five year purchase. I think a 10 year purchase. You need to have a 10 year plan. It's more important over the next 10 years than it's ever been because of what's coming with specialty medications and and the cost for these ultra rare conditions that can happen that we see all the time within the 80 employers that I consult for. Again, the re-entry to ISAC is not guaranteed. So you can leave, you chase a better deal, you wanna come back because you're sick, we don't have to let you back in. And we do that on a pretty regular basis. So please consider that. 
And then network discounts. So if you leave and you go to a small group level funded platform, like a Gravy or a United Healthcare level funded or an Aetna funded Advantage, um, a lot of these carriers are renting networks because they do not have much market share in Iowa. I sell these products for clients that are a fit, which are clients under 50 employees. I don't work with them, but our office does with other producers. We sell those products. They're not bad products. But if these clients had the availability to buy an ISAC type plan, they certainly would. There just isn't a fit for those employers under 50 lives, unlike Mitchell County. So our overall discount with Walmart today is about 50%. So we bill $100,000 from providers, bill Walmart for Mitchell County employees. We save an automatic 50% off the build amount for the allowed amount or the allowed charge for those services. You go to a carrier like a gravy, which I watched the video that you, with the producer that you met with. They are running the Aetna network. Aetna network, I've just, I moved another county very close to here as a new client away from them because the discount was not favorable to the county. It's about 38% between inpatient, outpatient, and professional. So $100,000 in spend, you're going to save 38% with a carrier where you're running a network, we're saving 50. So we have an inherent advantage. If you compound that over, you know, a million dollars, it becomes a very big number, which that works against you when you go to renew your, your health plan because your loss ratios are going to increase. Maybe the most important bullet point, if you leave, you can't get a network with the strength that we have with the Blues. Because we have so much business, we have a lot of leverage with providers. And then the last bullet point, our agency has done a lot of in-person education. We do all customized open enrollment materials. We just had a compliance webinar this morning that Lindsay said she attended, talking about uh, 1095 forms that we have to provide employees. We work with so many Iowa counties, we do a lot of customized things just for Iowa counties and what they want to be aware of from a compliance perspective. We also provide you with annual notices and disclosures that you need to give your employees each year. There can be significant fines if they go to the DOL and say, this wasn't given to me. So that's the medical. We haven't even gotten into the book yet. For non-medical, again, dental's going up 3%. It sounds like vision may be an issue with providers in the community. We have a visas as a vision option. We can also work with BSP. So those are the three carriers. Again, I'm an independent insurance agency. ISAC does not hold me captive. And that's a pretty unique when you're partnered with these types of multi-employer health plans, typically they make you wear their hat. I don't have to do that. So again, I work with counties even outside of ISAC, but normally they're larger and on their own, or they can't get into ISAC because they're not healthy. Any questions before we open the book? We've talked about a lot of what we're gonna look at, but. All right, let's open the proposal. We'll go to the first page, which is the client overview and benefits overview. Uh, Lindsay's our primary contact in the upper left hand corner and then as far as eligibility for benefits employees need to be working 30 or more hours a week and they would be subject to a, a waiting period of first of the month following 30 days. There's 24 deductions per year for benefits and post employment coverage you're required to offer COBRA as an employer of over 20 lives in the state of Iowa. Again our agency has a third party administrator that we own and we integrate that in with your enrollment platform so that's all done automatically for your for your employees to get the letters and for your staff not to have to actually administer that service. Can you answer why questions? Say that again? Can you answer why questions as we go? Yeah. Why 30 day wait? That's a county that's set by your county well okay. by the board. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. yeah every employer is different. That's a pretty common waiting period I will say though. The only yeah. exception is one that's official. Okay. They start. Yeah, and there we have that with counties. I yeah. That's the code or something. Yeah, we have a lot of counties that do have an OE for elected officials. They're in their own class almost. <clears throat> um, okay, so benefits overview. You have your health plan with Walmart through ISAC. You have your dental and vision with Delta Dental, both through ISAC. A group term life policy with Reliance Standard. And then your voluntary benefits. You have voluntary life. The accident policy, again, ISAC pays for all employees enrolled in the health plan to have that accident policy at no cost. And then employees not enrolled in the health plan can buy that. They can also buy coverage for their spouse, their kids, or the family. And then we have the partial self fund. That's the PSF. That's with Midwest Group Benefits. 
as well as the COBRA administration. So the partial self fund is buying down the deductible on that copay plan that we have. You have a copay plan and a high deductible health plan with HSAs. This is specifically working with the copay plan. You go to the next page, we have all of your employee costs shown on a monthly basis. So we have your, your $500 medical plan, full-time and full-time 40, full-time 30, as well as the HSA. And you can see the various employee costs. Dental and vision, the county pays 100% of single or employee only, and the employee can buy up. And then the voluntary benefits are based on your age and how much you're actually buying as an employee. And then the employer is also contributing $1,600 to single, $3,200 to family HSA accounts there at the bottom. So if you're enrolled on the high deductible health plan, which we'll look at here in just a moment, um, the county makes that contribution to their HSA account. All right, behind this, because I'm showing you a product that is outside of ISAC, every consultant is required to, to show you a compensation disclosure agreement. So what you'll find in here on page three of seven um, is gonna be an outline of all of my fees, all of our agency fees that you're paying through the various products. So if you wanted to go direct with Walmart as a 100 plus group, our fee is $34 per contract enrolled in the health plan. There's a fee on your group term life policy of 11% of the premium. And your third party administrator, Midwest Group Benefits, there's a $2.50 broker fee as a part of your admin fee for that partial self funding. We help employees with claim questions. We have access to all of the, the data between Walmart and Midwest Group Benefits. Um, that broker fee pays for those services. Now, with ISAC today, that $34 is not there. So you are not paying anything to our agency for the medical consulting fee as a part of the Iowa State Association of Counties Health Plan. They pay me a monthly retainer fee to give service to the 28 counties uh, in the health plan and then roughly 40 counties with the various products. I wanna make sure that's clear. Any questions on that? Okay, let's go to the ISAC tab. The first tab in the binder. This is an updated map and review of the different programs within the association. Again, the health program is the leader in the upper left hand corner. We have 28 counties a part of the program. Two are new in 2022. I envision at least two more joining in 2023. Um, do have a lot of conversations with other potential clients wanting to come into the association health plan. The dental program's grown tremendously. I think we added nine new counties in the last year, so we're up to 29. We're gonna add one more here in another month, so we'll have 30. The vision program continues to grow. Again, we added Avesis as another carrier option which within the vision program. So it's something you may wanna look at if providers are an issue with Delta Vision. We have exclusive pricing for Iowa counties with Avesis, and we can also quote VSP, uh, which is kind of the other carrier in the marketplace for, for Iowa vision plans. The upper right hand corner work site and ancillary programs. We have the group accident and critical illness. You offer both of those. The accident program that ISAC pays for includes an accidental death and dismemberment, and it also includes a wellness benefit. Again, I already reviewed the complimentary ISAC benefits um, on the meeting agenda. And then our agency, we're hosting the uh, enrollment platform. We're doing all of the compliance, the annual notices. We have a, a client service team that supports Lindsay. Um, we have a service inbox with three people that answer typically within an hour or two. Yeah. But we pride ourselves on service. Our retention rate with clients is 98%. The only clients I've ever lost have left because they got acquired. So we give, in my opinion, everybody says they give the best service. We give really solid service to our clients. And you can see the map of every county that we work with within ISAC. Again, there's about 12 other counties outside of this that we also consult for but I've not shown them because they're not a part of the association health plan. Next page is a review of your 2023 wellness program. So the wellness program runs on a calendar year, January through October. So they can close the, cap, the, the wellness program and then configure what your actual discount was for the next fiscal year. You got all 5% this year, so your county's doing a good job. 
2023 looks basically identical to 2022. We need 80% of your employees to get a physical, fill out the fax form, you get a 4% discount. If 60% of your employees do the health risk assessment, you get another percent for a total of five. So the last two years, you've got the max discount. So good job to you as a board um, and good job to the employees for following through with this. Under the employee incentives at the bottom, there's a $75 reimbursement for preventative exams. So an employee gets the exam that's covered in full by the health plan that gets submitted to Mercy, which gets a file feed to Reliance Standard. The employee should have gotten a check in the mail within the last 30 days of either $75 or $100, depending on which plan they enroll in. I think we had 1,700 of those checks go out. I don't know if Lindsay, yeah. most of those, if, you, if we've not heard of complaints, that tells me people got the checks. Yeah, I haven't heard of Also new this year, there's a walking challenge. So any employee that um, does a CareBridge review, which is the new EAP provider, and logs onto the Mercy portal can get a free Fitbit. ISAC's paying for, they bought 1,000 Fitbits. They've already given out 600. Um, employees need to wear these Fitbits, connect it to their Mercy portal. If they walk 10,000 or more steps, they get a dollar for every day that they do that for a maximum of $242. So it's a walking challenge, trying to incentivize activity. Um, I would imagine as time goes on, that incentive will increase as we try to drive more participation with folks being active. 10,000 steps is a, it's a challenge. It's about four and a half miles. So you certainly do have to be active. Um, but it, it's a new program. They'll continue to customize it as we need to, to make sure we're, we're getting the participation that, that, that they're looking for. So again, that's all part of your health plan fees. There's no separate cost for the Fitbits, for the incentive opportunities, and for the discounts for the county. The next page is a CareBridge uh, highlight and summary. CareBridge is the new EAP provider for counseling needs, financial counseling, legal counseling, personal counseling. ISAC pays for this for any county enrolled in the health program. So there's no cost. Employees can download an app now. The old provider was uh, EFR out of Des Moines. CareBridge is more of a national provider. Uh, they do have an app that you can download. So employees in a crisis situation can speak with a therapist within minutes. So this is a great benefit that employees just need to understand they have available to them. And again, there's no cost for this. All right, let's go to the medical tab. So the first page should be a rate adjustment utilization key at the very top. And we're gonna look at fiscal years 2021 20, and 22 in the upper left-hand corner. You're gonna see the collected premium, which means those are the premiums you paid ISAC each year. We start at 8.34, we end at 9.12. And then you can see the total expense. So this is 100% transparent. The total expense represents the net claims paid that ISAC was subject to, plus all the fixed costs. So they have to pay Walmart for an admin fee. We still buy insurance at a very high level. Um, all of those fees are included on the fixed costs, plus your net claims paid. So you can see your three-year average is 89%. This year you ran at 72%. You're having a phenomenal year. Currently, you are at the base rate on the key to the right. You're moving up to the level one discount because we cap counties going up one level or going down one level. So let's say your experience got much worse. You could never go from the base rate to a level two surcharge. This is where we have parameters in place. Unlike the open market, if you go on your own and you have a bad year, you will see much more than a 5% fluctuation in your rate. We have counties on their own that saw increases of over 30% for this year. Again, they can't get into ISAC. Our biggest ISAC renewal, I think, was 16%. And this was the highest year that we've had in a long time. So you can't go up more than one level. You can't go down more than Correct. one level. Correct. Yeah. So if your data gets much worse, you can only go down one level. If it gets much better, you can only go up one level. But what's likely going to happen next year if you have another year of 72%, you're going to go up another level. You're already qualifying for the level two discount. We just don't allow counties to you know, fluctuate more than 5% every year. So once we get FY23 data, which we're currently in, we'll know what's going to happen for your FY25 renewal. 
but you are already qualifying for an FY20, or excuse me, a level two or 10% discount. There's no guarantee, but it's, it's likely. You have an 89% loss ratio, which puts you at the level two discount. Same for large claim. You go down to the middle section, you're losing, this next year we will lose 136% loss ratio for large claimants. If you replace it with another uh, positive year, you're going to get a 2.5% discount on your large claim adjustment. So that's a total of 7.5%. I am 99.99% .99 confident that ISAC's renewal will not exceed that. So it is very likely that your county will renew within no change next year. Your three-year average is 3.5% over the last three years, which is phenomenal, which the market's done 8 to 10% each year. And you can see the year before, you ran at 107% loss ratio. You were not profitable just a year ago. So you're trending in the right direction. You're actually qualifying for a level two discount at the top, which is incredibly important. Where you're, you're going to lose an 88% loss ratio. If you replace it with an 88, you know you're going up a level. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So if we go down to the bottom, you have the ISAC base rate on the left-hand side. Trend was 8%. So every base rate went up 8%. You then went from a 0% to a negative 5 on experience. Your large claim stayed the same. Your wellness stayed the same at a 5. So you're going from 95% of base rate to 90. The base rate went up 8. So if you flip the page, actually, we'll, we'll look at one more page. I'll show you the actual renewal. I wanted to show you your 22-year history with ISAC. So that's what should be shown here. Starting in 99 through 2022, you go over to the middle to your county use rate. This is your profit or, or loss by year, totaling at the bottom of 105%. So you have not been profitable for ISAC over the, your tenure with them. However, the three and five year average is better, and that's why your overall renewal is a three and a half percent over the last five years. Again, trend was eight. So you're you you've been less than 50% of trend every year because your data has improved. But if you look back in time, it can flip and it can flip very quickly, quicker now than it ever has been in the past because one claimant can take your plan upside down. This will show your average contracts and then the ISAC use rate. So the ISAC use rate over the 22 years is 98% which is accumulated a reserve for us that we use to offset increases and create more rate predictability in the future. We're six months through the plan year for ISAC. As a whole, it's running very well. That's why I anticipate um, a, likely a six to 7% increase next year. And so if you do better or do consistent what you've done in the last year, your renewal is likely to be a 0% renewal again for FY25. So that would get your seven-year average down to about a 2% average increase year over year over year, which is phenomenal. It's consistent for the employees. You're with Walmart. You're with the best network you can buy. It's national. You can go to Mayo, U of I, Des Moines, anywhere. Cleveland Clinic for certain situations. You can travel internationally. We have less expensive networks that we can offer, but you start limiting some of those things. You have to designate a primary care physician. There are ways to save money within the Walmart portfolio, but you tighten the network. So you're buying the best you, you're buying the best network you can offer. In most counties in ISEC do that. Most have similar to us other than if they're not close to Rochester, they don't need Rochester. Regardless if they're close, they buy it. Still, okay. Yeah. We've had I think there's four or five counties that buy the it's a point of service plan, so it's the Iowa HMO. So it's very similar in Iowa. If you get outside of Iowa, then claims process under the non-network benefit. Um, but you can still go to Mayo and still get coverage towards your buy-down, your partial self-fund. Um, it's, it's a hybrid network. And then there's a HMO only, which is Iowa only. Then you can't go to Mayo. That's obviously the least expensive option. Especially here, if you have a serious diagnosis, the chance that you're going to go north instead of south is high. So are you saying that most ISAC counties have the policies that we have. Yeah, yeah, the network. The network. Yep. 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 Okay. 
Yep. And, you know, 95 of the 99 that I mentioned, the large majority have the, the PPO as an option, which is the most comprehensive now. Okay. Yep. All right, let's flip the page and we'll look at current on the left, renewal on the right. I've highlighted in red the plan changes. So there are a couple plan changes to note. 11E is your copay plan with your partial self-fund. 12C is your high deductible health plan that you give then an HSA contribution. And you'll see your premiums at the bottom. It's a 2.32% increase. You are well below the trend increase of 8% because you have positive data. That's the intent of pooling your resources group that do back. Groups that are positive and, and profitable for the association are going to receive a below trend increase. Groups that are not profitable receive an above trend increase. So the ch plan changes are there's there's one for each plan. Um, on the copay plan or 11E, you're going to see the out of pocket maximum for pharmacy is increasing to 1250 and 2500. Currently, it's 1000 and 2000. Now, what this means for employees as they use copays for pharmacy, all of those copays track towards that thousand dollars today. They will have the potential to spend another two hundred and fifty dollars because it will track towards a twelve fifty out of pocket maximum. You'll also see that for specialty medications and specialty only, we're implementing a three tier copay because Humira is going generic this year. We're going to try to incentivize folks to stay on generic instead of Skyrizi, which is the alternative or one of the alternatives that's much more expensive. So you'll have a 45 generic, 75 preferred, 150 non-preferred copay. Everything else about the plan is identical. So the employee's $500 deductible, $1,000 out of pocket on medical, none of that would change. Now you can change that with your partial self-fund, but that's up to you as a board. The plan that is being proposed here by ISAC, the only things shown that are changing are in red. And then on the high deductible health plan, the IRS is requiring that plans increase their single deductible to 3,000 for it to be considered an embedded deductible, which means if you have a family and we have five families on that plan, only one member has to reach a $3,000 deductible. They don't have to reach the entire family deductible of 5,400. So it's an embedded high deductible health plan, which is much better than a non-embedded high deductible health plan. If it's not embedded, one member would have to satisfy the entire family deductible. And so the IRS said in order to be considered a qualified high deductible health plan, a family member has to reach at least $3,000. So every plan we've had to adjust, and I have many clients that have a, the exact same plan, so they have to go from 28 to 3,000. And there is no choice by ISAC, there's no choice by you as the employer if you want to offer this plan. So one member, you might have to say that again for me. I'm sorry. Yep. Today you have an embedded plan, which means if you have a, we have five families that are on this plan, one member within any one of those families has a catastrophic event and pays 100000 in claims, they're only subject to a $3,000 deductible. They do not have to satisfy the full family deductible. Okay. If it was not embedded, that one member would have to pay 5400 Okay. because they're on a family contract. Okay. So for those five people, that can be very important if they have a large claim. And your county's given a very generous HSA contribution, 1,632. You are funding a large portion of what their out of pocket is. Well, last, it showed last year that we did have an embedded also, but it was $2,800, so. We, that's where we had to, the IRS said we had to increase it 200 bucks. It was them, right. Yep. 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 Okay. Do, do a lot of counties offer two plans like this, or do they? A fair amount, I would say about half. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That, are there counties that do just HSA? Not many. No. There's just ones that just do the deductible, not off the HSA. We have more counties that just do the traditional take off traditional. plan. Yep. HSAs are actually more expensive. So you can see your premiums are more for the HSA plan, significantly more. You're also then making a contribution to the account. So there have been counties that have backed off their contributions to the accounts because they're realizing that they're spending quite a bit more for the high deductible health plan. So that may be of consideration. Of the 3,000, again, you're funding 1,600 of that. So the, the out-of-pocket max for that employee, if they use all of it for health care, is $1,600. Excuse me, it's $1,400. Last year, we started requiring uh, out of the paychecks of $5 or $7 uh, 
contribution. Contribution from the employees. Yeah. Uh, as far as for the 11E, it was intended to help go towards the uh, partial self-funding part of it. Yeah. The other side of it for the HSA was to actually go towards premium reduction. Yeah. To uh, try to offset that. So. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, we didn't. We were trying to do something for it. As Minimal as, changes each yeah. year. Yep. So again, you you got, I think, the best, if not the best, the second best renewal within ISAC. Your data is positive. If we go to the next page, we can look at your partial self-fund. Or no, excuse me. The next page actually has the Wellmark standalone proposal. So if you wanted to go on your own and leave ISAC, you can do that. You can go directly to Walmart as a client or any other insurance carrier. Um, although I really caution you moving to United Healthcare or Aetna with the way they manage care and their pharmacy formulary. So what are covered drugs on everybody else's formulary is different from Walmart. Walmart is unequivocally the most comprehensive formulary that you can buy. So if you make a carrier change, pharmacy will be the first place that it impacts employees and it'll impact them day one when they pick up their script. It will move co-pays, it may not be covered, it may be much more expensive. Um, so that's where employees get hit first. And then it's just the overall experience of the different healthcare plans on the medical side, but certainly pharmacy is the most important. So this would be the same formulary that you have today, same plans that you have today, only leaving ISAC, going to Walmart directly as a client. And you can see the premiums are 9.33% less than current. So it's 82,000 less than current, and you're avoiding a $20,000 increase, so it's about $100,000 savings. If you wanna place your business with Walmart, keep the same plan, same partial self-funding, this would really be no change to the employee outside of a new ID card. Same network, same everything. They lose the dental and the vision. You can keep the dental and vision with ISAC, so you can you can but move. We still have to pay those premiums, then. We have to pay for the dental and vision. No, the dental and vision are separate today. Right. Yep. Okay. Yep. What you would lose, you'd lose the accident plan, the thirty thousand dollar accident plan. You'd lose the EAP. You'd lose the wellness program. I mean, you do lose a lot, but you can save a hundred thousand in premium to pay for some of those things. That's not the concern, it's the concern of what happens if your data gets worse. And it will get worse at some point. There is no question about it. It's like this. And you're riding a good part of the wave right now. Um, it's when it gets worse. There are not the parameters in place with Walmart Direct that we have with an ISAC because you are an employer of 85 employees, not 2,400. I can't stress that enough. You are scaling up your health plan to be an employer much larger than what you really are. And that's very important for the future. So same plans, same carrier, same network, same pharmacy benefit. It's an exact match. But if your data gets worse and you get a 30% increase from Walmart and you want to come back to ISAC, it may not be a good, you know, you could get declined. So you have a two and a half percent increase from ISAC and likely a no change next year. That's not a guarantee, but it's very likely your rates will not change after you renew for 24 months. All right, the next page has your partial self-fund illustration. So this is looking specifically at Plan 11E and buying down that deductible. So we're buying a $5,000 deductible from ISAC. Your employee's deductible is 500. 100% utilization in the upper right hand corner is shown the county's maximum risk per employee only contract is 53.50 or 12.7 for family, totaling $230,000. You can see your actual claims listed for 21 and 22 at the bottom. You're running between 25 and 30% utilization. $62,000 on average, which is just above the 25% utilization under the expected partial self fund claims. So here we show what your premium is for these folks, plus your partial self-funded claims, plus your admin fee. So your all-in cost is roughly $480,000 for that plan. So again, if we break this down into single family rates for this plan, it is substantially less than what you're paying for the HSA plan plus those contributions. 
because the HSA contributions are employee owned. This partial self fund is, is employer owned. So you only pay for the claims that are actually incurred. For the HSA, you just set up those dollars into the employee's account and it's theirs to manage. So this is the least expensive of the two plans that you're offering. The next page, we'll look at your partial self fund reserve. So you spoke about putting in, starting that reserve funding. You're the only county that historically hasn't created a, a health fund reserve for their partial self fund. We talked about that last year. You're starting it. Um, we're, we're still underfunding that, and that's what you're going to see in this scenario. Uh, we have a reserve of about $4,600, but you can see if we take a 10% increase in the rate of this plan, we're still going to end at a negative $23,000 balance because we're not putting enough into the actual plan for the claims that are being paid out of it. We would have to have those partial self-funded rates around $7,500, $75 for single, $175 for family to break even. Here's the thought on that. And yep. This is, I have a problem with that. Yep. It's it's unfortunate that that was never started right from the beginning. Yep. But I'm not in a position to have these people pay more to make up for what wasn't done a long time ago. Yeah. That's not right to do that. So we're trying to do it incrementally. We're trying to do it, and, and the five and seven that we're doing is is peanuts. I realize that. But it's not very much. It's something. But the idea last year was. For the county, as far as out of the general fund, we do a five year rolling average as far as what actually has been needed for the partial self funding. Yep. We'll use that for the next next year to plug the money in to try to build something up. Yeah. Trying to do it, but not on the backs of the people yep. to catch up. And that's totally fine. I just want to show you here what it would actually take to kind of get close to balancing and the budget. I just wanted to say that because I don't know if yeah. a lot of people really realize yeah. that. So. Yeah, it'd make a huge impact in the total premium, which would affect their contributions. Correct. Yep. I guess we could <clears throat> save a chunk by just going to that one plan, too. Right? If you just went to the just the copay plan, that would save a, a tremendous amount of money. Yeah, yeah. I would. But I mean, tell, that's still a good plan. But tell that to the 50% of the people that have the other plan. Everything's going up, you know? I, I don't <clears throat> I guess yeah. I'm on the cheaper plan, and I'm happy with it. But... Yeah, it's a it's a five hundred dollar deductible. It's a yeah, phenomenal right. health plan. It is. Yeah. yeah. The is. HSA, it's the HSA contribution that is is, is what the cost. It's, is. it's a big cost. Yeah. yeah the is. premiums are more, but then you lose out every dollar that goes into the HSA is employee owned day one. They're hundred percent managers. It's not theoretical expenditures. It's guaranteed. It's guaranteed. Right. Yeah. Where this is just only if it happens, and right. we know twenty percent of our employees actually have claims that drive eighty percent of the cost. Yep. So when we took this risk on, it was a good risk to take on, and you've saved a tremendous amount of money doing this. Um, it's just we had we it never got properly funded up front, and the HSA plans have gotten more expensive. Well, that's you know that's what insurance is for. Yeah, if, if, if we just offered the the eleven E plan, I mean that, that could save you a hundred thousand dollars, right? Yeah. And, and that's still a phenomenal health. It's plan. still a phenomenal health plan. But that's initially, what when we did it, Tim had said, you know that. 1400 the county gives them plus a 1600 we would cover that out of pocket. We're trying to incentivize people to go to HSA because it's cheaper, and now it's gone the other way. Yeah, and what high deductible health plans are supposed to incentivize consumerism, it just hasn't done that because the total cost of health care has gotten so expensive that a $2,800 deductible is not enough to change behavior. And so they're, they're still having the same claims. Now the county's paying more in premium, plus they're giving $1,600. It didn't work out. So yeah, that that is a that's the easy button to save a tremendous amount of money. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you still have good insurance. Towards your partial self fund to start that fund a little bit more, like the first or great second year, just to get it up there. You know, you still have insurance, and that's what insurance is for. Is it, if you need it, you use it. The five hundred dollar deductible. That's the lowest deductible of any county within ISAC. So you, it, it would be the best plan that twenty eight counties are offering. So you could you could market this to your employees. This is a phenomenal health yes. plan. Yeah. You could I agree. Down and take the sixteen hundred down. You could do that too. That's what I talked about. And then yeah. like, that doesn't make a difference. Our premiums still go up, and you can reconsider the HSA plan at all. Say that again. You could step right. down to sixteen hundred for those people who want to keep the HSA. Yeah, maybe you want a thousand and two thousand. That's and it. It still doesn't incentivize them not not to be using and, and reduce usage. Then you could consider it as a free. It goes up on so HSA that, again. Then that could be the next. 
Mm-hmm. That's what other counties. Plan. That's what other counties have done. They've they've cut back what they're making for HSA contributions, and we've had some folks go back to the traditional plan. Yep, because that's guaranteed savings to the county. Yep. <laughs> And what we've seen in the past by offering it to, I'm just going to be a little blunt about it. They, we have employees that will switch the traditional plan if they have something going on, and then the next year they'll go back to HSA. So they're supposed to whatever's best for them. Yeah, in any given which year. isn't bad, but it, that's how it's offered. So it's yeah. a good advantage. It's a yeah. 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 Yeah, I think the HSA is overfunded. I think you could back off of that, certainly, and still it's a great benefit. Maybe a thousand, two thousand the first year, and you look at it each year. Because how much is this? That's HSA funded. 1600 for single, 3200 for family. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Plus we get the other 125. Yeah. 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 Buy buy down for the deductible for the eighty twenty, and I just I just assume keep both of those plans so that so if the HSA is the benefit plan now we can say that I don't want it to go the other way direction also all of a sudden that the HSA is um, I don't know how to say it I mean, I like to keep both plans somewhat similar to each other. I don't know how to do that though. Yeah. Well, in, in, in especially in overall cost, trying to get the overall cost comparable, we need to lower the HSA contributions on behalf of the county. That's that's the first step. And the boy, employee can keep that money. When you retire, yeah. what, if you leave the employment, it's your money. Mm-hmm. You spend whatever you want. The, the 11E is theoretical expenditures that they have for that time frame, but it's it's not their money, so it's a guarantee. So that's, if the HSA, the incentive is, is that if you don't spend the money, the account when you retire to be a three year supplemental or whatever. The other thing about the HSA though is that the employee takes on more risk because of the higher deductible. So if you're a healthy individual, which so far you don't use it, it's a it's great deal. Stuff. But there can be a, come a time a person walks out the door and you, you just used a bunch of it. It hurts. So I mean, yeah. people need to realize that you take on more risk by having that plan also. Yeah, yeah. you do. Personal, I, I got a CPAP. I'm paying yeah. out of pocket $140 a month for that. If I was on the plan, it would be covered by the insurance. And that's coming out of my HSA every month. So, I mean, something can change from one month yeah. to another. Right. Yeah, right. Well, but we're having this meeting to try to right. go to a lower, or, you know, say, insurance premium. And I right. think yeah. that's one way is go to the cheaper plan, and that's still a good plan, and Great. we're going to save a bunch of money. Yeah. Best yeah. carrier, best network, most yeah. comprehensive. I mean, the four, now that changes. That's the nice right. thing. Yeah. Yep. The guts of what you're buying is still uh, still phenomenal. Okay, let's go to dental and vision. We'll look at all the non-medical benefits. I kind of already mentioned that the only rate change for any of these plans is going to be on the dental plan. So currently you offer, it's called Plan 2N, but it's a $1,000 annual maximum for dental insurance for every member enrolled on the dental plan. Uh, again, the county pays 100% of single. There's two networks. We have the PPO network on the left-hand side of this benefit illustration, the Premier on the right. The PPO has about 40% of Iowa dentists. The Premier has 90. And then you can also go to any dentist in the state and and submit a claim for reimbursement. So you can still go anywhere. Delta Dental is the biggest dental provider in the state, hands down, similar to like Walmart on the health side. And we only hire them to process claims. We do not, we're not paying Delta Dental a premium. We're a self-funded dental plan. We collect all the premiums. And we're trying to guess what we're going to have in expense. And again, we've gone into FY24 with a known loss or a projected loss to keep our renewal at 3%. So the county paying a single premium, the county would have an increase of about $1.15 a month, $1.20 a month per employee per month. And then there'd be a slight increase to the employee difference for family. If you go to the next page, this shows the entire dental portfolio. So we have five plans. You're right in the middle. Um, We've added some plans. Plan three we've had for a while. Plan four we added a year ago. 
So as you go from left to right, the dental benefit gets larger. So you currently have a thousand dollar annual max. There's a fifteen hundred and a two thousand. Plans three and four also have a dependent orthodontia benefit of fifteen hundred and, and two thousand. Now they're more expensive, but it's marginal. Um, the employee only increase is very low because there's no orthodontia uh, concern there. But when you add orthodontia for family, it, it's going to be more expensive, and you can see that reflected in the premiums. The next page is your vision benefit comparison. Again, in just listening to your prior meeting, it sounds like maybe there's some issues with finding in-network providers close to Osage within 50 miles. So I brought, and I can leave this with you, a Delta Vision uh, provider search, a Visus and VSP. So these are the three carrier options. We have two carriers approved right now through ISAC with exclusive pricing. So you can see your Delta Vision's on the left, a Visus is on the right. Avisus does have the most providers in Iowa of all three of the uh, in car carrier options. So it's slightly more expensive, but it's voluntary and it's pre-tax. So when you're when you're looking at this, we're you know we're talking a couple dollars. Um, you pre-tax at a dollar fifty. You break it down in 24 pay periods, a 75 cent increase. If it gets you the provider that you want, this is very easy to change. So I'll leave those with Lindsay and, and all of you. You can look at that. You can look them up on the websites. It's very easy to do that. Um, this is an easy switch. I would just say find the best, find the carrier based on access to the providers. Historically, we only had Delta Vision as an ISAC endorsed option. Then we added a VSIS, and now we can still work with VSP. So we have all three. All right, let's go to the life insurance tab. We can review your current employer paid life policy with Reliance Standard. The county pays for a $10,000 death benefit for every employee benefits eligible. We have 80 employees that are benefits eligible and the cost of this is very, you know, it's minimal. It's $2,800 a year, under $2,800 a year for you to offer this for all full-time eligible employees. On the next page, Paired with the employer paid life is the voluntary life. Now you're buying this through ISAC and when you buy it through ISAC, you're a part of a larger group. And so we got some concessions from the insurance carrier because of our size. If you go down to the guarantee issue section, you'll see that employees under age 70 can get $200,000 of life insurance without health questions. So at new hire, if you've had a heart attack, a stroke, cancer, any you know, serious condition in your past, you can get 200,000 of life insurance guaranteed. Now, if you decline that and you want to enroll at open enrollment, you have to go through underwriting. So it's a one-time opportunity when you're hired or when we put this in place originally. We have 10 employees enrolled, two spouse and three uh, dependent children. And you can see the rates are all based on your age on the right-hand side. As you get older, it gets more expensive. But it's a deal for kids, families with kids, especially with multiple kids, $3 a month gives you a $20,000 death benefit for all kids in your household. Nothing parents want to ever think about, but in the event that something like that happens, having financial difficulties as you go through that even adds to that, you know, adds more stress to that situation. So you do have to take at least a minimum benefit as the employee. So you'd want to take a $20,000 benefit as the employee to be able to buy it for your kids. Spouses can buy this on their own without the employee purchasing, which is unique. Reliance Standard is the only carrier that I know of that allows that. And then we have your voluntary benefits under the last tab. These are all the flyers for the various products that you purchase or you offer your employees to purchase. The core policy is the accident plan. So you'll see on this flyer on the right hand side, again, ISAC is paying for this for all employees enrolled in the health plan. So we buy 2,400 of these every month. ISAC spends a tremendous amount of money to have this as a benefit for all of your employees under the health plan. So you'll see a, a zero premium shown under the core employee only. They can also buy up coverage for their family very inexpensively. The alternative is an AFLAC type policy that would probably be twice as expensive for something comparable. Again, because we're buying so much in bulk, we're getting a significant discount from the carrier. 
So to replace this, if you left the ISAC health plan, it's a $30,000 expense for the county to buy that again for your employees. And then any employees waiving insurance can also purchase this and all of the benefits that it pays out for are on the back side of that flyer. Any accident off the job, it will reimburse for it. And you can also go to a chiropractor to start this benefit. Not all accident type policies allow that flexibility. So this is meant to supplement when you have an emergency situation where you have an out-of-pocket medical expense that this reimburses you as the employee directly. It does not coordinate with your health care plan. We then have the voluntary critical illness insurance. And on the back side of that flyer, employees can buy insurance for critical illness diagnosis, life-threatening cancer, a stroke, a heart attack. Um, you can see the list there. The premiums for this policy are based on how much you purchase between 10 and 30,000 and how old you are. So as, again, as you get older, it gets more expensive. And then we have the voluntary group term life flyer that we already reviewed, but it has all of the rates for employees based on how much you purchase on the back and how old you are. It's a lot of information. Do you want to go back and review any parts of the actual renewal itself? Any questions from the board or for people sitting out here? So you said we have one of the best plans of ISAC, right? The $500 deductible, no county is not buying that land down underneath that $500. Correct. Are there some doing the same? Yeah, there are. Uh, quite a few do 500 Quite a few do 500 Yeah. Yeah. But no one's underneath of that anymore. We had one county at 250 and they're increasing that. So. Okay. Didn't we earn $40,000 for our premium going towards next year for our wellness program? 5%. So whatever your premium is. Why well, don't? Yeah, you did. $45,000. Your premium would have been $45,000 more expensive had you not got your 5% discount. But we earned that last year. Why don't they just cut us a check for that rather than put it on next year's premium? You keep, then your premium would go up that $45,000. But if we ever leave, if we ever leave ISAC, we never get that check. That's yeah. That's not how it works. <laughs> yeah, it's just a discount. You, you, you got to renew to get the discount. So you put the charity flowers. Yeah. That's how the policy has always been. ISAC created that long before my time. Yeah. So your time's here now. My time's here. It's a good policy. It makes sense. Well, it's just like an incentive to keep staying in the program. Yeah, that's the small incentive in my opinion. Over if you look at this bigger picture. Um, of what can happen if you leave and you have one of these rare conditions on your health plan. Everything's a myth. It is. But I, I would really caution you, um, some of these small group level funded plans, the networks do not compare. The pharmacy benefit will be different. The networks will be different. Any t I, I move carriers all the time for private companies that have to make money. <laughs> And I see what employees go through when we make these changes, and it is not a fun process. You'll have frustrated employees. The only solution that minimizes that is if you go to Walmart on your own. That would be the safest home for you, but there's still risk. Again, all of these counties that want into ISAC are with Walmart today that can't get in, that we're not allowing in because they're running so poorly. So they're already getting the best discount with you know, some of those other things that if you go to an Aetna funded advantage or United Healthcare, United Healthcare would actually be probably a little bit better than Aetna and better than like a gravy type product that is renting the Aetna network. So they're not large enough to have their own network. They're having to rent and kind of piecemeal it together. And when you do that, you're paying all these other vendors. And you don't have the control. They don't have control over their contractual agreements with providers. They sub that out. Regarding the HSA and the uh, other, the 11 e is there a way that you people can crunch numbers if we were going to try to level those yeah. with each other? Yep. I have a spreadsheet. That How does use. a person figure in that on my comment that uh, the HSA person is taking more of a risk, though, also because of the higher deductible. How do you figure that into it? They get a reward if they don't use yeah. it. They don't 
Okay. Yeah, I mean, you're incentivizing, you try to incentivize the consumerism, and hopefully they do make better decisions. It's not proven to, to actually happen on many cases, but if they don't use it, if they don't go to the ER on the weekend and they walk, go to the walk-in clinic on Monday, they just save $500 that didn't come out of their HSA account. Okay. Are there yeah. prescriptions? You, you don't get prescription coverage either, but then you use good RX to get a cheaper rate. Yeah, you still get prescription coverage, but it goes to your deductible. Right, it goes to your yeah. deductible, so you don't get like the, the $35 copays. You're paying 120 a month for them, but then you go, I think it was you guys that told us about good RX. Yeah. So yeah. then when they're on that, they use good RX where you get a really cheap rate, and that's your out of pocket, so you can capitate it that way yeah. too. So yeah, good RX is a phenomenal app. And you get. You have a lot of more risk, but then it encourages you to not spend the insurance money because it's, it's I heard you more in the in your account. Okay. So there's a risk reward. Yeah. But I have a spreadsheet that, at least from the county's perspective, that would level the playing field financially, or at least get it closer. Because right now it's like this. Right. So the the five and seven dollars that we're doing right now, if we were going to do that. There's no there's no reason why the HSA people would be contributing the five and seven dollars because there's no reason why the HSA people would be trying to create a partial self funding plan for the eleven E people. Yeah, and that, there's no reason for them to do that. That five and seven dollars is probably that's just their contribution, right? That's their contribution. Their, so that doesn't that doesn't necessarily go into the reserve fund. That's just what they're paying to be on the health plan. It's to offset their the higher cost of yeah. the plan is what yeah. the thought was. Yeah. I'll take so we'll consider the employees cost, the employers cost, and the HSA contributions. And then you'll be able to see I'll, I'll do a current renewal and a couple options that you can look okay. at. Yeah. I used it for Mills County. They have two different plans, same thing. They were struggling with very high cost on the high deductible plan. Their copay plan was running much better. Okay. So I'll be good. I'll send that to you. Do some counties have the uh, HSA plan? Like yeah, yeah. Mills County was. I just was there about a week and a half ago. Same discussion where the high deductible plan is costing them quite a bit more, and so they're going to make some some adjustments. Yeah. yeah. Fair adjustments. It's over the or company yeah, up. within reason. Well, it's transparent. We show the employees here's the total cost for both plans. It needs to be close to comparable. One can't be two hundred dollars more expensive. Yes. So. Agree. Yeah. Yeah, to me, insurance is made if you need it. You shouldn't be banking money on your insurance if you're not even using it. You know. Yeah, that's that's, the, that's happening with some of your employees today yeah, that are healthy that are getting the sixteen hundred dollars. But most people aren't getting on the HSA. The incentive was most employers don't give sixteen hundred. The employees yeah. put their own money in, and yeah. it's tax tax deductible. tax free, and then yeah. you get it later. I, most people are putting their own money in an HSA. Right. An employer account, like my husband, it's, yeah. he doesn't. He gets some money, but he doesn't get sixteen hundred a year. Yeah. And the HSA is to incentivize tax reduction. You keep that money carried forward for future expenditures when you retire, or yeah. if there's a hiccup. Right. So it is a federal thing where we just kind of did the carrot because we thought people would use it more. Yeah. Stringently and be more. Yeah. Be a better consumer. Yeah. Exactly. If you were us. <laughs> what would you do? Would you keep two plans, even it out, go to one plan, save money? Yeah, I'd probably keep two plans and try to even it out first and see how that goes. Maybe the rates will change. The, the rates for MISAC won't change, but I think you'll see probably a little bit of shift back to the traditional plan. So you'd have to, what would you lower? Lower the HSA amount? Yeah, yep. yep. Yeah. Yeah. By doing that, you'll have employees then look back at the $500 plan, sure. which is less expensive for the county, even after we make a reduction that would then further save the county dollars. And the employees are empowered to make their choice. And then they have two options. And you're not yeah. forcing them. Yeah. Yeah. Forcing them to go to one plan. Right. Yeah. You let them make their choice. Yeah. yeah. If the playing field's even, uh, what are they doing? That ain't going to make the other go up. Next to yeah. Because if we, if I balance your budget, if you go to that partial self fund reserve analysis, 875 is the single premium that we'll, we'll call that balancing your budget. So 875 is the total cost for that plan. Just the high deductible health plan premium is 852. Plus you're giving $140 a month in HSA contributions. So that plan is costing your county $120 more a month than the traditional plan. So I mean, that, that, that's going to be within dollars. 
So you'd have to take $120 away from that yeah. to make even it out or something. You may not want to do it all in one year. You may want to do it in, you know, in increments. That's totally up to you. I would at least go sixteen hundred to a thousand. So that'd save you fifty a month. So that you know, that'd go from one twenty to seventy and then you look at it again and see if anyone makes a shift. Like one thousand to two thousand. Yeah. I mean that's just a, a an idea, it's a round number. But you can do seven fifty, fifteen hundred. Yeah. Any number you want. Yeah. You just need to keep it consistent by single and family. That's the only requirement. Yeah. But again, Think in your mind, if things continue kind of like they are, your rates should not change again next year. It's, it's likely that you have a lot of rate predictability over the next 24 months. Yeah, that's something to look at too, you know, to think about. It's hard to say in this industry. I give 8 to 12% increases day in and day out, like clockwork. And if it's a bad group, it's 20 to 30%. I mean, that's, that's just the way it is. Um, you can get up down, upside down so quickly with a couple numbers. That's all it takes in a group of 85 people. One member with one really rare condition or five people on SkyRizzy, which is $17,000 a month that treats psoriasis and Crohn's disease and arthritis and a lot of conditions that they've never treated in the past. Conditions your members may have. They don't have them, they will. At some point, you will have members taking specialty drugs. It's just... The FDA pipeline, all it is is specialty medications. No, no manufacturer is trying to create a new generic drug to sell at $4.50 a month. They want to sell the drug that's $10,000 a month. It's unfortunate. Our country, the cost per capita is 200% of our other countries that we compete with. And our spend is, our spend is too two times what they're spending, our life expectancy is under the norm. So it, it tells me that we're making a lot of poor decisions as Americans on our diet and exercise and some of those other things. We have world-class care here, and that's why people fly in all over the world to come get care at Mayo. Um, but yet our, our life expectancy doesn't reflect that. Well, we're getting rid of gas stoves. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. New York's putting a proposed ban on that. I saw like California's that. already done that. Like they're already done that, right? <laughs> the existing. Yeah. All right, well, thanks for your time. And if, if you have any follow up questions, I got one. Yeah. So I know just hiring, currently we don't need to hire anyone, but one of the big things is like family health insurance. Yeah. What does, is there anything we can do to try and lower that cost for our employees? Because right now, I mean, yeah, we put towards. They pay the difference, like we have a thousand. Eight hundred dollars is a lot of money for employees. So the county would have to pay some of the family difference. Mm -hmm. That's but other how counties, you, like what do other counties do? Yeah, so that's that's a good question. We have counties that do exactly what you're doing. We saw counties that pay a hundred percent of family. Mm -hmm. well, there's a wide range. We're paying a thousand dollars to reduce it right now, aren't we? The family part of it. You're paying so much for the employee only plus some benefit dollars, I think. So maybe that total is about a thousand, but our family premium is 17 or 1800. So the employee pays the difference. Some counties are a hundred percent, which is becoming more rare. Some are 90, 10, 80, 20. Some get a set amount like yours. I mean, it, every, everybody's different when it comes to how much they make for contributions to their health plan. Is there, I mean, right now we have, it's either single and family. Is there options for like single and spouse? Yep. So within ISAC, there's not. It's just two tier premium. So the problem if you go from two tier to four tier, your families get hit hard because the family premium will go up to make up for the loss of revenue from employee spouse and employee child. So if you went on your own to Wellmark, you could do four tier rates. But again, your families will not like it. Anyone with spouse and kids on their health plan, with your current funding arrangement, their premiums will go up four to $500 a month. And what ISAC is, as we look at our population, we have a lot of county employees typically stay at the county, they're good jobs. So you have the employee and the spouse that may be 55, 60, 65 years old, that would get a reduction in their premiums, but the younger families would see their premiums go up when we know the cost is coming from the older employee spouse. And so it, it's challenging to do that. 
for ISAC in, in, in the demographics of the group, it's made sense to stay two tier. Um, but you could do four tier, you, you know, if you went on your own. It's just challenging to make that change, it's especially with how you're funding your employee employer contributions. So when we're hiring younger families, they're going to end up paying more. Yeah. So what what else you can do? The the government passed a ruling for January 1st where if coverage is considered unaffordable for a family, it's called the family glitch. So if if an employee's contribution for family and your lowest cost is seven hundred dollars, so eighty four hundred dollars a year. If that exceeds nine and a half percent of your household income, your spouse and or kids can qualify for a tax credit on the marketplace. So they go to the marketplace where Walmart is a provider. They can buy a policy. They can get a tax credit from the government to offset that premium or a portion of the premium. That's new. Mm -hmm. Prior to January 1st, if the coverage was affordable to the employee, the spouse and kids were not eligible for a tax credit. So that's a big change. So if you do have employees that um, want some help. We have quite a few individual consultants at Assured Partners that can walk them through their family scenario and see if they would qualify for a tax credit. So that is something that exists. Can you send that to them? Yeah. Yeah. Getting that yeah. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah, because I know yep. that there's some families that might accept. Mm -hmm. Let me get back to the family just a little bit. So I, I've got down from the last year is that the rate is 16 $16.99 for a family plan on the 11 e but I have it down, worked down twice. The county pays a thousand dollars to limit that down, so the employee only pays six ninety nine. Yeah. That's where the that's where the one hundred twenty five dollars because the family plan is getting that. There's the hundred twenty five dollars that cycles through the single plans to offset that. So, I mean, the question was, can we help the family plan anymore? My only answer is that we are doing something now. Not against that, but I don't. Yeah, you're paying. You're, you're paying for almost two thirds of the premium. Yeah. Okay. I just want that to be clear that we are yeah. doing something. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. You're paying 100% of single. They, the single pays five dollars, and they pay 706 of the total. The the real total premium because the county is paying 100% of the partial self funding too, mm -hmm. essentially. Yeah. So your real premiums for that plan are about two thousand dollars. So again, the county is paying about two thirds of that. Total premium. Yeah. But the only way to make the employees' costs go down further, the county has to pay more. So maybe it's you look at making some HSA reductions, you see if there's a shift to this other plan, which saves the county money. I think it needs to be a multi year approach on how you address this and make some incremental changes. Um, but yeah, the, the unfortunate part the only way for the employees' costs to go down is the county's cost has to go up. I think you're. 1600 is an opinion of yours. I, I don't know anybody that would take less money willingly. So um, you're talking loosely about changing it to 750 or 1000 or whatever. But 1600 is a good number. I think that's just because I'm rolling. But is there, is there? Yeah, I'm just telling you know, the board I, what, what they deal with. I'm yeah. comparing apples. I'm trying to compare this to my wife's plan. When I started about a year ago, I'm like, you know, this county insurance is, is crap compared to what the hospital gets. So then I'm like, well, so I'll just take the HSA because I don't need health insurance. So now you're talking 1600 dropping it down to some other number. Can I just withdraw? Yes. If you don't, are you dual no, enrolled? No, you're, no. you're dual enrolled on your spouses and the county. Yeah. yeah, you can absolutely drop the county health plan <clears throat> okay. at open enrollment. All right. Yep. Or Would switch to the other plan too. I mean, it sounds it. like he's already enrolled on the other plan. Yeah, you, you don't have. Do you have family then? But she pays I me. Mean, not every person has uh, that luxury though. Right. Well, my yeah. wife works there too, and, and their family plan is pretty expensive at the hospital. It's, it's less than here though. And the hospital has an inherent advantage. They can create their own network because they're a provider. I consult yeah. for quite a few hospitals too. It. If we're using apples to oranges yeah. either. Right. Use their facilities, yeah. It's a twenty-five dollar copay. Yeah, they just steer you to stay in the domestic the premium. Like, it's the monthly thing that's socking them. Yeah, the monthly it's premium. Any, anywhere you go, the monthly health insurance will sock. Oh yeah. yeah. And it's insurance. Right. But so, you can absolutely drop it open enrollment. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I, I don't <coughs> the premiums are lower when you go to the deductibles or whatever. That's all lower. It's just right. Correct. Um, the month the 
it's the comparing, trying to which which one should we go with this year? Yeah. Then County was not the choice. Okay. But I mean, you can have yours here and hers there. And, and I do you. have the HSA. Okay. But if it's gonna go to nothing, then why have it? You know, you talked about sixteen hundred dropping it down. Well, they're just talking about level on level. Okay. You know, trying to get the two plans more comparable yeah. price wise for the county. You know, that's. We're, what we're supposed to do, you know, we're supposed to try to save money, right? I mean, uh, very good, small for it. Well, my opinion, I I feel like we have a very good insurance plan. Both plans are very oh, good, but they, they it has been an incentive to get me to get my last two people hired. Even our wages are low, and when they look and say, "Oh, I don't have to pay," you know, very little premium, where now I'm paying two hundred and fifty bucks at my other job. It makes up for the wages being a little lower. So if I wouldn't have had the good insurance and the no premiums, I wouldn't have gotten the last two people hired. Right. For employee only. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Yeah, I don't think we need to add to the premium. Yeah. But I mean, it's good insurance. Both plans. I mean, they work great for. It's great for the employee. Now. Yeah. It's great. I mean, it's it's a, it's a yes. good benefit, and I would hate oh, yeah. to see yeah. some of it go. Oh. So. Just trying to level the two out, maybe you know, so they're. Yeah, yeah, historically, historically, if you do switch insurances, and you've seen this with the employees, yeah. when they have higher tier meds or inhalers or specialty meds, yeah, then yeah. the doctor has to write a lot of. Um, yeah, you have to get a prior approval. Prior approval you have to do step therapy. Every insurance here has a preferred vendor that they work with for inhalers, for diabetic meds, for. So the doctor. Walmart is the most comprehensive. Yeah. So I can tell you if you leave Walmart for any other carrier, you will lose pharmacy coverage from what you have today. It will be different. Drugs will go from a $10 copay to a 40, or it can go down. It doesn't always get worse, but Walmart's the most common. Anytime we take a manufacturer from Walmart to UHC or Gravy or Level Fund, any of these other solutions, because we have to do it for private businesses, they're not like municipal business, it's a pain. Employees complain. They have to get paperwork. They have to go to their provider. They lose coverage. They have to appeal to the health plan. I mean, there's there, there's a lot of protocol in place. When premiums are less and their discount at the medical provider is worse, that's not a good combination for ongoing rate stability. So if you're taking in less premium, and I know that I'm going to get a, a discount that's not as competitive as what Walmart has, it will catch up with you. It's challenging. Walmart has a monopoly. They really do. They have such a market share in Iowa that they have control over the providers. They just have that leverage that no one else has. And they cover a lot of meds, which makes our insurance more expensive, but for employees using the health plan, you know, they certainly appreciate it. Anything else? I want to make sure every question is answered. And everything you want to say. You yeah, say. I think I've said it all. Yeah, I wanted to make sure that I just want you to make the best decision for the county, but understand with your eyes wide open what the potential ramifications are long term. Again, think of this as a three to five year purchase. I really urge you to try to do that. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank yeah, you. thank you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you all. Thank you for the invite. Yes, yes I want to hear you. Thanks for being part of this. Thank you. Yep. We need a motion to adjourn.